In today's Medico Apps Masterclass we will learn about Chlamydia. Let us start by looking at some of the most interesting facts about Chlamydia. It is an obligate gram-negative intracellular bacterial parasite. Now this probably is the most important point to remember about chlamydia. This means that chlamydia, as it is an obligate intracellular parasite, does not exist outside host cells. So, one very interesting fact about chlamydia is that it is unable to grow in cell-free media. This makes it unique and hence, like viruses, chlamydia is also against Koch's postulates. It is also called PLT agent because it causes the three disease, namely, cytokosis, LGV and trachoma. Another very important feature is that they do not have peptidoglycan and N-acetylmuramic acid in their cell wall. This absence of peptidoglycan and N-acetylmuramic acid in their cell wall differentiates chlamydia from other bacteria. This is a frequently asked MCQ point in various PG exams. While erythromycin, tetracyclines and azithromycin are effective against chlamydia, penicillins and its derivatives are ineffective. And finally, chlamydia is the most common organism associated with reactive arthritis. Just to recap, the three most important points from this slide. Number one, chlamydia is an obligate intracellular parasite which means that it cannot be grown in a cell-free media as it exists only inside the host cells. Point number two, chlamydia do not have peptidoglycans and N-acetylmuramic acid in their cell wall, which differentiates it from other bacteria. Point number three, chlamydia is the most common organism implicated in reactive arthritis. Now let's move forward and look at the growth cycle of chlamydia. Before we see the growth cycle of chlamydia, let's understand that it has two developmental stages, the elementary body and the reticulate body. The elementary body is the infectious form of chlamydia. They possess a rigid outer membrane that bind to receptors on host cells and initiate infection. Also because of their rigid outer membrane, the chlamydia resist intracellular killing, reticulate bodies of a non-infectious intracellular form, yet, they are the metabolically active replicating form of chlamydia. When the elementary body finds a host cell, it is engulfed through endocytosis and then becomes infected. A vacuole encloses the elementary body and the bacteria is now a reticulate body. It can now replicate itself through binary fission. After division, the reticulate body becomes the elementary body. Then, the multiplication inside the host cell ceases. The elementary bodies are now released by reverse endocytosis. These infectious elementary bodies can now infect other host cells and continue the cycle. Typically, the entire cycle takes around 24 to 48 hours. So just as a recap, chlamydia has two developmental stages in its life cycle. The infectious stage, known as the elementary bodies and the metabolically active and replicating stage, known as the reticulate body. Once the elementary body infects the host cells, it is transformed into reticulate body, and then it undergoes multiplication by binary fission, and finally, released by reverse endocytosis. This entire cycle takes about 24 to 48 hours in chlamydia. Now let's look, in detail, the difference between the two forms of chlamydia. If we compare the size, the elementary body is smaller, about 0.2 to 0.3 micrometer in size, whereas the reticulate body is about 1 micrometer in size. Now, let us see the differences in their morphology. 
while the elementary body contains rigid tree laminar cell wall, which protects it from intracellular destruction, the reticulate body lacks the peptidoglycan cell wall. Also, the elementary body contains electron-dense nucleoid, whereas it is absent in the reticulate body. By far, the most important difference is that, while the elementary body is infectious, whereas the reticulate body is non-infectious. Let's now look at the difference in the ratio of RNA to DNA. Now we know that reticulate body is actively dividing by binary fission, hence the amount of RNA will be more. So if we compare in elementary body, the ratio of RNA to DNA is 1 is to 1, whereas the same in reticulate body is 3 is to 1. Also, the reticulate body is metabolically active while elementary body is not. And hence, binary fission is seen in reticulate body, whereas elementary body do not replicate. And finally, elementary body is resistant to trips and digestion thanks to its rigid tree laminar cell wall, whereas reticulate body is sensitive to trips in digestion. Let's now look at the different species of chlamydia. This clinical manifestation of trachoma is due to chlamydia trachomatis. Chlamydia trachomatis is also a very important cause of sexually transmitted disease and UTI in sexually active adults. Then we have chlamydia pneumonia which cause atypical pneumonia along with pharyngitis and bronchitis. The next species is Chlamydia citrusi. The host for this species is birds including domesticated poultry, as well as cattle, sheep, pig and horse. Chlamydia citrusi is transmitted by inhalation, contact or ingestion among birds and to mammals. It causes psittacosis, which, in birds and in humans, often starts with flu-like symptoms and becomes a life-threatening pneumonia. Finally, the fourth important species is Chlamydia picorum. This species has been isolated only from mammals, like cattle, sheep, goat and koalas. C. picorum is the most common chlamydial species to infect koalas and is the most pathogenic in them. At this point, let me highlight an important MCQ point based on the difference in effect of C. trachoma and C. psittacosis on their host species. C. trachoma leaves host cell with scar, whereas C. psittacosis leaves the host cell severely damaged, followed by lysis. At this point, let's look at the important differences between these species of chlamydia. Regarding the morphology of the inclusion body, in case of trachomatis, the inclusion body is round and vacular, while for C. pneumonia it is round and dense, and for C. citrusi it is large and dense, with variable shape. Glycogen is found in the inclusion body only in trachomatis, and that is why it is vacular, whereas it is absent in the other species. Elementary body is round in trachomatis and citrusi, whereas it is pear-shaped in chlamydia pneumonia. Only chlamydia is susceptible to sulfonamides, while other two species are not. C. pneumonia has only one sero variety while citrusi has four, but C. trachomatis has more than 15 sero varieties. The natural host, both in case of C. trachomatis and C. pneumonia is humans, but for C. citrusi, it is birds. C. trachomatis has person-to-person -person transmission, and also transmitted from mother to infant during delivery. C. pneumonia has both airborne and person-to-person -person transmission. C. citrusi is transmitted via airborne mode and via bird excreta to humans.
The major disease caused by C. trachomatis are trachoma, STDs, infant pneumonia, and lymphogranuloma venerum. C. pneumonia causes pneumonia, bronchitis, pharyngitis and sinusitis, whereas C. cytosis causes cytokosis, atypical pneumonia and fever of unknown origin. I have not elaborated much about chlamydia picorum because it is not that important from human point of view as it affects majorly ruminants. Let's look at important antigenic properties of chlamydia. Heat-stable lipopolysaccharide is species-specific, protein antigen, present at envelope surface, and most importantly responsible for complement fixation test, which we use to detect chlamydia. Then we have the major outer membrane protein or MOMP, which is used for intraspecies typing, that is serovars or serotypes. These major outer membrane proteins can be demonstrated by microimmunofluorescence. Let's now discuss the resistance properties of chlamydia. Chlamydia infected host cells are profoundly resistant to apoptosis induced by many different apoptotic stimuli. The inhibition of apoptosis is thought to be an important immune escape mechanism, allowing chlamydia to productively complete their obligate intracellular growth cycle. Molecular mimicry describes the phenomenon of protein products from dissimilar genes sharing similar structures that elicit an immune response to both cell fan microbial proteins. Chlamydia-induced INF gamma inhibits INF gamma-dependent expression of MHC class II proteins. This molecular mimicry might thus be a mechanism by which infections of chlamydia may trigger autoimmune diseases. And importantly, chlamydia escapes killing by inhibition of phago lysosome fusion. So just as a recap, heat-stable lipopolysaccharide is helpful in complement fixation test, whereas major outer membrane protein helps in identification of serovars or serotypes by microimmunofluorescence assay. Also chlamydia escapes killing by phago lysosome inhibition and inducing anti-apoptotic acetivity in cells. And finally, molecular mimicry of chlamydia may be an important reason for autoimmune disease associated with its infection. Let's end today's Medico Apps Masterclass by reviewing the most important points which are asked in various exams. Chlamydia is an obligate gram-negative intracellular bacterial parasite. It cannot grow in cell-free media, hence is an example of exception to Koch's postulates. It does not have peptidoglycan, an N-acetylmuramic acid, in cell wall. It is the most common organism associated with reactive arthritis. Erythromycin and azithromycin are effective in treatment whereas penicillin and its derivatives are ineffective. Elementary bodies are infectious and reticulate body forms chlamydial colonies as inclusion body. The four species of chlamydia are trachomatis, pneumonia, cytosy, and picorum. There are two major antigenic determinants, heat-stable lipopolysaccharide and major outer membrane protein, MOMP. And most importantly, chlamydia escapes killing by inhibition of phago lysosome fusion, inhibition of apoptosis and molecular mimicry. Let us have a look at the brain teaser question for today. Chlamydia does not grow in cell-free media. This statement is true or false. If you know the correct answer to this question, write in the comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking here. Also hit the bell icon once you have subscribed so that you can get a notification whenever we upload a new masterclass. Check out this next Medico app masterclass which I feel will be very helpful for you.